Hey guys, welcome back to the game room. Today we have another Kickstarter preview. This time it's Lineage by Grey Wolf Games. Lineage is entering its final week on Kickstarter, and uh, it's an interesting game. It takes a lot of elements of Chinese philosophy and kind of merges them into a game. It's almost an abstract strategy game, but there's a ton of theme to it, which sounds odd for an abstract game. Uh, but essentially it takes all the elements of Chinese philosophy like magnetism, uh, martial arts, yin and yang, the eight directions and the four seasons and just merges it all into one very thematic experience. I'm going to kind of go through my thoughts more on the game. Uh, the actual gameplay itself, I can't really go into too much detail because there's a lot of stuff going on, but I will highly recommend the Grey Wolf videos on their Kickstarter for a more detailed gameplay, and uh, talks from Crits Happen also did a pretty detailed gameplay walkthrough. I am still going to give you an idea of the gameplay, but since there's so many elements in here, I really want to focus more on uh, the overall theme, the actual, and more like how the gameplay actually interacts in the game, and uh, give you an idea of that. So let's take a look at the game. I'll show you some of the components from the prototype. As always, it is a prototype, so we can't really judge it on the components, but I will say that this is one of the nicest prototypes that I've gotten so far, so uh, it's pr going to look pretty impressive, I think. So let's take a look at that now. So here we have the setup for Lineage, and as you can see, it's a very beautiful looking game, even for a prototype. As I always say, the pieces are not final, but uh, this looks very nice already. So out here you have a semi-randomly generated board uh, based on the four seasons. You have the, sum or excuse me, the spring forests, the winter lakes, the autumn marshes, and the summer mountains. And the four seasons not only indicate just pretty tiles, they indicate where you're actually going to be able to move, which I'll get to in a moment. Now, the game itself is slightly asymmetrical, uh, and that sounds kind of weird, but essentially uh, all but one player are going to play Masters and Students, which are indicated by the colored master, so if you're the blue player, this would be your blue master, it has the black bottom, and the student, which is the white top, uh, colored bottom matching color, essentially. So you'll each get two tokens. And one person has to play as the general and the emperor. The emperor is the white in the circle, and the general is the black with the plus. Now, it's not cooperative in any way, even though it kind of sounds like you'd be playing against the emperor and the general. Uh, each player is trying to accomplish the, uh, a different goal, uh, each different type of goal. So essentially the emperor and general have their own goal, masters and students have their own goal, all the masters and students have the same goal, though. You're just trying to race to, to the finish, essentially, and collect each of the one, each of the five different types of uh, martial arts styles. You have snake, dragon, tiger, leopard, and or panther. Yeah, it's leopard. Sorry, and and uh, crane. And you're trying to get all the different styles and essentially get back to the yin yang piece in the center while still holding on to your lineage token, which is the little D4, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. The general, on the other hand, the general and emperor player, is trying to get their general to each of the four different cities, indicated by these little circles, uh, tiles with the little circle different colors on them. They're trying to get them to the four corners of the map, so each of the corner cities, which are starting fa face up on the map, and block it off with a little chi token. And this black chi is for the emperor general, and each of the other players has different color chi as well. Uh, but everyone's going to have access to these other colors. The Emperor General are the only ones that have access to Black Chi. So the core mechanics here are going to be movement. And movement with the Emperor General and with the Masters and Students is kind of why I, I call this a bit of an abstract game. As you can see, it's very much about octagons and, and hexes and things like that. And the four directions here and all that good stuff. But... Uh, the components I find with the Emperor in general, the blocking mechanism, the way they actually go around the board blocking off terrain, uh, is very go-like to me. It feels like they are trying to essentially put down these, these chi as blocking mechanisms, which they are. Uh, it just has a weird go feel to me. It might, it might just be me, but that's how I feel about it. And I think that actually adds to the theme a bit, because obviously go is a... Uh, an ancient game of, of high abstract strategy, so I think that's really cool. Uh, let's go through the different movements. Essentially, each uh, token, you'll get to choose one of your two tokens to move in a turn, and there's a few different things that govern the movement. The first thing are these little yin and yang tiles. You have the white one here that the emperor starts on, and the black one over here that the general starts on. Now, as long as it's white and black, each player can choose either their white or their black token to move. 
So you can either move your master, which starts on its own corresponding temple of the same color, or you can move your student, which starts in the middle. Uh, each token can move three spaces, and the spaces can be enhanced by chi, which uh, we'll talk about chi in a little bit here. And the way it moves, you can move through uh, t uh, tile terrain, or you can move through cities or whatever tiles those are. And the other thing that, or one of the other things that governs movement is the season. And the season always starts in spring. So we have spring up here. And that indicates the tiles that you can't move over. So since it's spring, I wouldn't be able to move over the spring forests here. So the forests would all be essentially locked off for me. The emperor in general have a very, uh, an added element to their movement. The emperor moves through uh, fields and things like that normally, but he will actually he can actually have the option to flip tiles as he goes around. Now, flipping tiles does two different things. So let's let's just do an example here. So we'll move one, two, three, and he can choose to flip these three these three tiles, and they flip to an orange side, which indicates a field, and he'll put a black chi in each of these. So these fields are now blocked off. The players can't go through them. Essentially, students and masters can't move through fields with the chi tokens on them. The general can actually only move through fields with chi tokens. He can't move through normal to normal uh, uh, forests and marshes and mountains. He has to move through fields. And that's important because these two are going to have to work in tandem through the entire game. You have to get the Emperor over to the General, and they need to be able to flip the tiles so he can get to those cities to block off the tokens. So the he has to essentially get around and actually block off each of these towns, so you're going to have to be moving those in tandem. And as you can see, there's a limited supply to the Black Chi, so you have to choose wisely where you're going to actually going to be flipping these tiles so that the General can move around, while in addition thinking about where you're going to block the other players. Because if you can totally block off a player, then they might lose their lineage token. So this lineage marker here indicates that you can essentially roll this for chi. Not only roll this for chi, but you have to have this lineage marker to end the game. To essentially win the game, you have to have your, your school's marker. You want to keep the respect of your lineage. So let's say, let's go back a step here, and let's say that somehow the general, or excuse me, the emperor, was able to block off these spots. And he ended here. One other thing to note, very important, is that when a yin and yang tile becomes unoccupied, or occupied, it's going to flip to the other side. So, again, this is the, one of those things that dictates what moves. Since both of these options are black, the only person that can move would be the black token. So each player would have to choose their black token to move. Let's say that we did this blocking here, somehow. Uh, I don't think it's possible in the scenario we have by moving just three, but let's just say we did. And the blue player has to move. Now, as you can see, you have the black and black here on the yang, so they're gonna have to move their master. And as you can see, blue's master over here, he's, he's pretty much blocked in. He's got three fields around him blocked off. And then the spring forest, which would normally be fine, but since we're in the spring season, that means he can't move there. And if you can't ever have a problem where you can't move, you essentially, that's where you're going to lose that lineage token and put it onto your little temple there and move him to the center. So, unfortunately, you're going to, have to start losing turns if that happens, and that's where the Emperor in general can become very, very powerful when they're actually blocking off large chunks of the map and not necessarily just moving their general to the outside, because obviously that's the end condition, but the actual movement around the board blocking off different segments of the board and depending on what season it is it's going to be very important where the emperor moves he's going to be the high priority target essentially uh, so let's go back a little bit we've moved them around uh, just to get that was just to give you an idea it's it's not the you're, you're not gonna be able to block everyone off at any given time but it is important to take note on if you can block someone off, it can be very important and it can stall their game quite a bit to the fact that they don't have a lineage token and they have to get back to that temple just to get the token. Now, what do these other uh, tiles out here do? We have different shapes and things like that. So as you can see, the, the temple tiles already start face up. And the temples are what actually control the seasons. So if a, tile, or a, if a uh, student ends on a tile with the temple there, you'll actually be able to change the season and uh, they all there's just the four different seasons the same rules apply it would just when you go to summer 
the red tiles are blocked. When you go to autumn, the autumn tiles are blocked, so on and so forth. So that's fairly simple. Now, the other spots are towns and palaces. The towns are the round ones, and as you can see in the corners, they're already flipped over. But as you go around and land on them, you're actually going to be flipping them over as you go. And that'll do a couple of things. First, it'll generate chi of that type when you end your turn there. So the uh, metal chi can be generated there. And uh, so if I was the red, uh, or red apprentice here, you'd get, generate a chi. And it also tells you what the active uh, uh, chi is for that turn. And the active chi is essentially what you spend to do any of the actions, the different type of chi actions, which there are a, a variety of those. But the main ones are using the chi to flip over tiles that have been... Uh, flipped by the Emperor, you can actually reclaim them by spending five of the same color, whatever the active chi is, to flip that over. Uh, you can use chi to, uh, extra chi to spend on movement, so you can move extra spots uh, on the map itself. You can also spend chi to use the elements of magnetism. And magnetism works pretty much like you'd expect. The little minuses and the pluses will actually indicate uh, magnetism on which way different pieces are going to move. So if you're negative to negative, it's going to repel each other. If it's positive to negative, it's going to attract each other. So you can spin chi to do that as well. There's a couple other minor rules that indicate movement as well, or direct movement, like contemporaries can't move past contemporaries, masters can't move through masters, apprentices through apprentices, etc, etc. Uh, but they can move through different types. And also, uh, one important thing is that the Emperor can, or the general can, conscript the apprentices into service if he moves onto the same space. So they would essentially tip onto their side and become a, a government proxy or government agent and actually work for the, uh, they'd actually lose a card as well. They lose one of their different fighting style cards back to the deck and they have to work for the Emperor essentially. So I know that's a lot of stuff going on. There's a ton of stuff to this game, honestly, and that's really... It's not the tip of the iceberg, but the actual uh, learning comes from the interactions themselves. There's, I mean, the, the actual different actions aren't too difficult. Uh, you move around, you can block things off as the Emperor, you just have to know what you're doing, essentially. If you're the Emperor and the, and the General, you just move around and block things off and try to get to the corners. If you're a Master and Apprentice, you're trying to visit the different Masters and learn their different trades. If you're, if you're a Blue Master and someone reaches you, you have to teach them the Blue skill, which is essentially just drawing a card from the deck over there the different skills. And if you are a uh, one of the other masters, the same deal. You have to essentially teach them your skill. One thing I think I completely forgot to mention were the palaces. Uh, palaces over here, I think we're still on the buildings here, but palaces are similar to towns in that they generate chi of that type. So if you land on the chi, or land on the palace, you get that chi. And it also lets you uh, reclaim terrain based on the directions. So in this case, the directions, uh, I can't even read it here, south. So and that's where these directional uh, tiles come as well. Uh, so you'd be able to reclaim one of the tiles in the south based on the, the color on the card and things of that nature. And at the end of your turn, you roll this die and you generate that much chi of that color. So depending on your color, like I said, your chi is easier to generate for you. Uh, so wow, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but really it just comes down to collecting chi uses energy, but the chi isn't really the end game. The end game is trying to get those different uh, fighting styles, or, like I said, as the general, controlling those four corners. But the chi is going to be very important for both players because they'll be able to use their chi to essentially control the board and control where everything's moving using magnetism, using their uh, ability to block off tiles or clear off tiles with chi, or uh, essentially conscripting the agents. So I, I hope that was very, I hope that was clear enough. Like I said, if it, if you want a full, more detailed walkthrough. Grey Wolf Games has some really good walkthroughs on their on their channel there, or excuse me, on their Kickstarter. Uh, and Crits Happen did a very detailed walkthrough as well, I believe. I consider that to be a very good walkthrough. This is just to give you an idea of the flavor. It's a lot about movement, but with that movement, all the different elements of seasons, magnetism, uh, alchemy, and the actual martial art theme come through very well, I think. Uh, so let me give you my opinion on the game and uh, see if you want to back it or not. So guys, that is Lineage by Grey Wolf Games. Overall, I really enjoyed this one. I, I feel like it's very rare that a game is inseparable from its theme. Uh, even some of my favorite thematic games, you could take some elements of the theme out, and the game itself would still be pretty solid. In this game, 
every single individual element is dictated by Chinese philosophy. It's, it's got some element of that in every single rule from alchemy to the movement to the directions to the uh, seasons to the colors uh, to even just the emperor, the martial art theme, the yin and yang movement. Every little bit, every intricacy is all tied into that theme and I really applaud Grey Wolf Games for going so in depth with that theme. It's obvious that uh, Chinese philosophy means a lot to them and they've put a lot of work into that and in incorporating that into the game. If you're a fan of uh, Chinese philosophy or martial arts or even really heavy abstract strategy games, I think you'd really enjoy Lineage. I, I like the game quite a bit. It's uh, There's a lot going on. Uh, like I said, the rules I covered, it's not the entirety of the game. Uh, there are a couple of good walkthroughs already out there, but uh, I think it covered enough to get across my point that there's so much going on with movement. The game is mostly about movement. You're just trying to maneuver around the board in different ways and affect the game with your chi, like doing magnetism or blocking off terrain as the emperor, or uh, just trying to stay unblocked as the masters so you don't lose your lineage token. Uh, and using your chi effectively. There's a, a few different individual components that are kind of hard to nail down your first time through. You probably won't get uh, what's going on about ha until ha about halfway through the game. You know what the goals are. The goals are very simple and you're only moving one character per turn but there's so many different options as far as spending chi where you can move different things like that so if you don't understand it right off the bat if, if, if you got lost during the walkthrough it's understandable. It's, it is a little bit complicated but uh, if you are a fan of Chinese philosophy, like if you if you even think you like the theme, it's worth checking out. The game isn't super expensive on Kickstarter, and if the component quality of this prototype is any indication, I cannot wait to see the final version because this is a very beautiful game, and uh, it, it's just it's just really awesome looking. I, I I love seeing this on the table, and I love that the theme is so intertwined with the game itself. So guys, if that interests you at all, I suggest backing Lineage on Kickstarter. I think it's a really cool project. And honestly, it means a lot to these guys, uh, so I, I definitely think you should check it out. Thank you for joining me for yet another Kickstarter preview. As always, I will leave the link to the Kickstarter in the annotation above me here, and in the link in the description below. Uh, this is entering its final week on Kickstarter, so uh, if you want to check it out, do it quickly. Uh, and they're, oh, they're over halfway to funding, so it's looking very positive. Try to get the word out for them, uh, because it's a really cool looking project. I'm really excited to see it fund. I hope, I hope this does well. So overall, guys, I really enjoyed Lineage. As always, you can follow us on uh, Twitter at WG Tabletop and on Facebook at facebook.com slash weaponsgradechannel, or you can email us directly at weaponsgradechannel at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time in the game room.